Good morning, I'm Father Bob White, the Vicar of St Mary's here in Fratton, Portsmouth. Welcome to this morning's Sunday service for the National Online Church of England, as we begin to celebrate together the ordinary time, the first Sunday in Trinity. With God, nothing will be impossible. For he is our God. And the God of salvation is making all things new. Amen. together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Our readings today encourage us to reflect on how we are called to walk in faith and hope. Let us begin by reflecting on our lives and calling to mind those times when we have failed to walk with that faith, those times we have failed to live in hope, the times when we have failed to be signs of God's love. And so let us ask our Father's forgiveness for our sins.
Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word is a light to our path. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We listen to God's word, a reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans. The promise that Abraham would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be their heirs, <coughs> excuse me, heirs, faith is null and the promise is void, for the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is their violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written. I have made you the father of many nations. Abraham believed in the presence of the God who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many, many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead 
for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith and he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It would be reckoned to us who believe in God, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. As he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he had heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If only I touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house, he saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion. He said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. This is the Gospel of the Lord. speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Just recently returned from a few days at Lawn Abbey. Lawn Abbey is a diocesan retreat house somewhere between Leicester and Peterborough. I say somewhere between because every time I go there, it seems to have moved to a slightly different place, and the roads by which you eventually arrive are never the same roads twice. And so you travel with slight fear and, uh, and that, that you're not going to arrive at your destination. So you rely on good old Google Maps, except Lorne Abbey is in the middle of nowhere and occasionally the satellite message will drop out and the machine tells you that you'll have to wait for it to return as you drive yet further along the country roads, not quite knowing where you are going. But you keep going because you're confident that sooner or later something will happen that reveals to you that you're on the right road. And fortunately, sooner or later, over the horizon appears Lawn Abbey. And there's a great sense of relief and joy that you finally got there once again. We tend to rely on things to help us in our journey to wherever it is we think we need to get. We place our trust in Google Maps and sat-navs and other such things. And we have to do so believing that sooner or later they will get us to where we need to go. This morning's readings are about people who travel in faith, people who travel in hope, people who know that providing they trust the way they are being led, they will arrive at the right place and all will be well. St. Paul, in the first reading from the letter to the Romans, 
reminds us of Abraham and his lifelong journey of faith, trusting that God will bless him and his seed and that God will fill them with his promise and the fulfillment of a covenant. Abraham faces many challenges. There are many twists and turns. Many demands are made on him which almost make it seem impossible that this promise will ever be fulfilled. But Abraham travels with faith and travels with hope not looking at what is happening around him, not being distracted or worried by what seems to be things that are impossible, but instead walks trusting that God is with him and that God will share his journey and lead him to the place he needs to be. And then in the Gospel reading from Matthew, we heard of Jesus calling Matthew to follow me. And Matthew, we are told, rises from his job and joins the journey with Jesus. There seems to be no hesitation. There's no question about, well, what will happen next? Or what do I do with my work? Or where will I go? Or what shall I say? But instead, he simply rises and follows Jesus. He walks with hope. He walks with trust as he shares the journey that Jesus will make. And on that journey, they encounter many things. And in the gospel reading this morning, we heard how there are two people who encounter them who also walk by that same faith, that same hope, that same trust in Jesus. The woman with the hemorrhage of blood and the synagogue leader whose child has died. Both of them, despite all that they face, despite the situations they find themselves in, trust that by being with Jesus, by touching his garment, by having him come to the child, all will be well. They show their faith and their hope as they come to him and place themselves into his hands. And Jesus brings about his healing, the healing of the woman and the raising to life of the child. We journey through life, and sometimes we are faced by challenges, by things which are difficult, by things which seem impossible to understand or make sense of. As the church begins what it calls ordinary time, we perhaps acknowledge that ordinary time is often anything but ordinary. It is often extraordinary. And the things that happen to us, the things that happen in our communities, the things that happen in our societies and our world are challenging and difficult. And if we become distracted by them, if we begin to ask about them and worry about them and become overwhelmed by them, then the danger is that we lose our way. We instead need to be like Abraham like Matthew, like the woman, like the synagogue leader. And despite what we face, despite how difficult life can be, to walk confident that Jesus is sharing our journey. He is walking with us, and if we allow him, he will be leading us, and we will be with him, and all will be well. So as we think of Abraham, as we think of Matthew, as we think of the woman and the synagogue leader, let's also today reflect on our own lives, on those things that we face, on those things that unsettle us, those things where perhaps we find it hard to see the presence of God. And let us pray that we may have the faith and the hope to trust that he is there, and that we will eventually arrive at the place he calls us to be, and we will be safe in his arms, carried on his shoulders, and healed by his touch. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
So let us affirm our faith in the one who calls us to walk with him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let us be still and let us open our hearts to God as we bring before him our prayers this day. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for all things come from you. You give us life, you give us love. We give thanks that your presence is within us and surrounds us at all times, encouraging us, loving us, challenging us to action so that we may sow your kingdom seeds of justice and freedom, respect, peace and love in our everyday lives. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Spirit of God, come upon our diocese. We pray for Justin, our Archbishop, Jonathan, our Bishop. We pray for all clergy and lay ministers in the diocese, especially for the ministry team here in our two churches. We ask your blessing on the church families of St Mary's and St Faith, that they may show you their love to their community and be places where trust and hope are develop. Guide our thinking that we may reflect your dreams for our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wise and gracious God, we ask your blessing on leaders of all nations, that their decisions may be influenced for the common good. Grant to them the gift of integrity and the moral courage to do what is right. We pray for King Charles and our Parliament. May peace and justice, freedom and truth be established throughout the world. We pray for the world, particularly for countries that are torn apart by conflict, illness or hunger. We pray for all refugees that they may rebuild their lives with support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of God, give strength to those in any kind of distress, the hungry and cold, those finding it difficult to make it needs ends meet, the unemployed, the homeless, those on the margins of society. We ask your loving presence be with all who are mourning the death of a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, loving God, be with those who are in pain and suffering. We pray all who suffer with them and worry for them. Enable them to be aware of your love. In a moment's silence, let's bring before God anyone who is close to our hearts and is needing prayers at this time. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks that through your love we have life eternal. We pray for family and friends departed. We pray for those who have recently died and for those whose anniversary of death occur at this time. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Let us, in a moment of stillness, also place before God our own hopes and joys, our sorrows and our fears, all that fills our hearts and minds this day. Merciful Father, 
accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So wherever we are, let's be aware of that peace of Christ shared with us and find ways to share that peace with others. And the bread of heaven, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and singing. and bless you loving father through jesus christ our lord and as we obey his command send your holy spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son on the night before he died he had supper with his friends and taking bread he praised you he broke the bread gave it to them and said take eat this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Our Lady faith, Wilfred, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. So in union with all who seek to walk with Christ, let us pray with confidence as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the last Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. So wherever we are, let's be aware of this presence of Christ with us in our lives. Let us pray that it may bring us peace of heart and mind.
Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Christ's holy, healing, and enabling spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and turn. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ.